Hello everybody, today we are going to take a quick look at the Invisible Man. Yes, yes, I know what you're thinking, but how can we look at him if he's invisible? You're very smart. Shut up. This was written and directed by Lee Wannell and stars Elizabeth Moss and Oliver Jackson Cohen. Cecilia, played by Moss, finally manages to leave her abusive boyfriend Adrian, played by Jackson Cohen, who responds by committing suicide. Surprisingly, he leaves her a large sum of money in his will. And she slowly but surely starts to rebuild her life, but then a series of strange, unexplainable things start happening to her. And she suspects her ex is to blame for all of this, but that can't possibly be true because he's dead. Or is he? This is, of course, a reimagining of one of Universal's classic horror films, uh, one of their better ones, in my opinion. Claude Rains' performance in that film was fantastic. That man was just delightfully insane. And he did a really good job of playing that part both scary and funny, depending on the scene. I think one of my favorite parts from that movie is the scene where he puts on nothing but a pair of pants and proceeds to go out and start frightening people, and all you see is this disembodied pair of pants skipping down the road going, Here we go gathering nuts in May, nuts in May, nuts in May. I love that. The 2020 version of The Invisible Man was originally supposed to be part of the Dark Universe, but we all know how that went. <laughs> yeah. So now it's just a standalone film, and the story is considerably different this time around. Instead of some kind of drug concoction that turns the man invisible, it's technology. And this man does not need a drug to make him insane because he's already a sociopath. And I do like the angle they took with the suit. It's basically just covered with a bunch of tiny cameras that allow the suit to project what's behind it, which, as I understand it, is basically how today's experimental cloaking technology works. Moss is very good in this role. Yeah, Elizabeth Moss is good at playing an abused woman. Who knew? This is the kind of character that just generates infinite sympathy because everything she goes through in this film is truly horrifying, and she sells every bit of it. A man who is probably her crazy ex-boyfriend is constantly stalking her and doing unspeakable things to her and the people she loves, and there is just no end to this guy's cruelty. And it's easy to not only feel frightened by all of this, but incredibly frustrated because, as the audience, we know she's not crazy. She knows she's not crazy. There's never really a moment where she questions her own sanity. But of course, everyone else thinks she's crazy. And what exactly are you supposed to do in that situation? How do you convince people that you are being stalked by an invisible man, and he's the one doing all these terrible things. It wasn't me, it was the invisible man! He's right over there! I can see him! Can't you see him? It was him! He did it! He did all of it! You have to help me! You have to help me! You see the problem here. And I really enjoyed watching the evolution of this character. She begins the film afraid to even leave her house just to walk to the end of the driveway to check the mailbox. And by the end of the movie, Fight has told Flight to fuck off and she is ready to kill this asshole. And the scenes with her and the Invisible Man are incredibly scary. I mean, how do you fight something you can't see? And Benjamin Wallfish's music amplifies the tension that much more. I mean, that is how you score a horror movie. There were a couple of things I didn't like. Uh, there is a moment where the Invisible Man tries to trick Cecilia's sister into thinking she no longer wants anything to do with her by sending a very nasty email. And honestly, I thought the sister bought that a little too easily. I mean, for something like that to just come right out of the blue, like, really? Also, Adrian and Cecilia have a dog. And there's a point about halfway through the movie where Cecilia sneaks back into their old house and the dog is still living there. Why the hell is the dog still there? Adrian gave Cecilia all this money, millions of dollars in fact, but he didn't leave the dog in his will? No one took care of the dog? What the hell? That is how you know he was a horrible person. He did not take care of the dog. Overall, I thought this was really well done. Moss turns in a great performance. It's scary as hell, and I highly recommend it. And that's all I have to say about The Invisible Man. Till next time, take care.